Hi everybody. Today we're going to be talking about solving linear equations. Now for most of you guys this is a review so today should be pretty easy. All right, first thing we're going to put into our notes is some vocabulary. We want to make sure that we are all on the same page with that vocabulary, that we're all using some common terms. Here is vocabulary word number one, variable. If you need to, please pause your video right now so that you can copy down this definition. A variable is a letter or other symbol that represents an unknown value. Okay, word number two, it's actually a phrase. Isolate the variable. This means we want to get the variable by itself on one side of the equal sign. Again, please make sure to pause your video so you can get this down completely. Okay, vocab term three, again a phrase, inverse operation. This is the opposite operation of the one shown in the equation. The inverse operation will undo the given operation. Okay, again, I'm going to have you pause your video to jot down these steps to solve linear equations. And again, you should write down that title, Steps to Solve Linear Equations, so you know what those steps are for. Okay, the first step is to use an inverse operation to eliminate any term that is being added to or subtracted from the variable term. Remember, the variable term is the term that has the variable attached to it. Now keep in mind that this is going to be done on both sides of the equal sign. If we use an inverse operation on one side to eliminate a term, we have to do the exact same thing on the other side. Step number two is to use an inverse operation to eliminate any number that is attached to the variable. Now if there's a number attached to the variable, that means we're going to have to multiply or divide as our inverse operation. And again, remember that if we do that on one side of the equal sign, we must do the exact same thing on the other side. Mm -hmm. Step number three is to check your solution by substituting your answer into the original equation to make sure that you get a true equality statement. That means both sides of the equation um, equal the same number. So if we substitute our value, our answer in, we should get something like 12 equals 12. That's a true equality statement. All right, so let's do some examples. Please write down example one in your notebook. 23 plus 4R equals 83. According to our steps, our first step is to use an inverse operation to eliminate any term that's being added to or subtracted from the variable term. All right, right here, 4r, that's our variable term. We know that because it has a variable attached to it. Okay, 23 is being added to our variable term. So we're gonna need to eliminate that. Now, because I'm a visual learner, I like to um, put these two straight lines around the equal sign. I call them the railroad tracks because once I start putting a couple more equal signs in as I go, it looks like railroad tracks. The railroad tracks help me visually remember that whatever inverse operation I do on one side of the equal sign, I do the exact same thing on the other side. So my inverse operation is going to be to subtract 23 because that's the opposite of what's happening in the original equation. So I'm going to write minus 23 on both sides. Now I draw that straight line underneath to help me um, keep, my, keep my steps separated. I know that 23 minus 23 is 0, so basically these terms cancel each other out. And on the left-hand side of the equation, I'm left with 4r. On the right-hand side of the equation, I will do 83 minus 23 and get 60. Okay, step number two was use an inverse operation to eliminate any number that's attached to the variable. So the variable r has a 4 attached to it. And whenever there is a number hanging out right next to a variable with no symbol in between, that operation means multiplication. So I want to use the inverse of multiply, the opposite, 
and the opposite of multiply is divide. So I'm going to divide by 4 because that's what's attached to the variable. And I'm going to go to the other side and also write divide by 4. Now, 4 divided by 4 on the left equals 1. Okay, so the 4's cancel each other out. I am still left with 1R. An R by itself means 1R, but if you feel more comfortable putting the 1 in front, feel free. Okay, on the other side, I will do 60 divided by 4, and I'll get 15. Okay, we've completed the first two steps, and the third step is to check your solution by substituting our answer into the original equation to make sure we get a true equality statement. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my original equation, 23 plus 4r equals 83. Now I'm going to substitute my 15 in place of the r and see if that math will work. So 23 plus 4 times 15 hopefully equals 83. Okay, order of operations states that I'm going to need to multiply these two terms together before I add. So 23 plus 4 times 15 is 60 equals 83. Now I'll add 23 plus 60 is 83 equals 83. And there's my true equality statement. It's true because 83 is equal to 83. Our solution checks out, and we know that r equals 15 is the correct solution. Okay, go ahead and write down example 2. And some of you might think this one looks a little scarier because it has fractions, but that does not make it scarier. We're going to follow the exact same procedure. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting my railroad tracks in those straight lines around the equal sign that help me visualize both sides. And I am going to eliminate any term that's added to my variable term. So here's my variable term, and I can see that 2 fifths is being added to it, so I'm going to subtract 2 fifths on both sides. Okay, those guys are going to cancel each other out because they're inverse. And I'm going to rewrite negative 2 thirds C. Now when I rewrite that, I like to attach that negative sign to the numerator. I do that because if it's hanging out in the middle in front, sometimes I lose track of it. So I attach it to the numerator. That way I'm sure not to lose it. Okay, on the right hand side I'm going to take 2 fifths away from 6 and 4 fifths. Okay, I don't need to worry about the whole number. 4 fifths minus 2 fifths is 2 fifths. All right, step number two, use an inverse operation to eliminate any number that's attached to the variable. So attached to my variable C is negative 2 thirds. So that negative 2 thirds hanging out next to C means multiply, which means I'm going to divide by negative 2 thirds. And I'm going to do that same exact thing on the other side. Okay, these guys are going to cancel each other out and that'll leave me with just C by itself. Now I know that dividing fractions means I'm really going to multiply by the reciprocal. So my first fraction is going to stay the same, 6 and 2 fifths, but I am going to turn it into an improper fraction. Okay, so that means 5 times 6 is 30 plus 2 gives me 32 over my denominator of 5. Okay, I'm going to change that division to multiply and change the second fraction that I'm dividing by to its reciprocal. 3 over negative 2. And now I'm going to multiply. Now I like to cross simplify and I can see that um, both of these guys are divisible by 2. I'm going to take this and divide by 2, which is going to leave me with negative 1. And 32 divided by 2 gives me 16. 
Now I'm going to multiply my numerators. 16 times 3 is 48. And 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. Okay, now I just want to turn my um, improper fraction answer back to a mixed number. So I do that by division. Negative 5 goes into 48. Negative 9 times just 45, giving me a remainder of 3. I'm going to rewrite my answer over here on the left. So I still have negative 9, my remainder of 3 over my divisor, and that's my solution. Okay? You guys go ahead and substitute that value in and check if your answer works, and we'll look at that in a minute. All right, go ahead and pause the video at this time and please take a look at how I substituted our solution into the equation. And I did, in fact, get a true equality statement. So I know that c equals negative 9 and 3 fifths is the correct answer. Okay, friends, here we go. Example 3, and this is our last example. I purposely picked this problem because um, it has a couple of red flag problems, um, problems that cause common mistakes amongst students. So we're going to try to avoid those mistakes by um, dealing with them directly in our examples so you'll know what to do with them in your homework. All right, you guys probably already know this about me. My first step is going to be to put in the railroad tracks around the equal sign. Okay, now here's our first common mistake. People see a minus sign in between their terms, and they think that the inverse operation is going to be to add to both sides. However, here is our term that needs to go away first. Okay, It's not our variable term. It's not attached to the variable. We need to get rid of a positive 2.27. Okay? Now, one way that we can um, avoid the confusion and we learned when we were working on integers that when we subtract integers, that's the same as adding the opposite. So I'm going to take my subtraction sign and turn it into a plus sign. And I'm going to take my d divided by 4 and make it the opposite. So positive d divided by 4, the opposite of that is negative d or negative 1d if you prefer divided by 4. Okay, all I did was apply a simple integer rule of subtraction, changed it to add the opposite. But that makes it pretty clear that um, that positive 2.27 has to be subtracted from both sides. So that's my inverse operation. Subtract 2.27. Okay, the railroad tracks remind me to do that on both sides. Okay, and these guys are inverse, so they cancel each other out. On the left-hand side, 2 minus 2.27 gives me negative 0.27. On the right, I still have negative 1d divided by 4. Okay, my next inverse operation. I want to get rid of the um, negative 1 fourth with the d. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at it like this. This is negative 1d divided by 4. The opposite of divided by 4 is multiply by 4. So I'm going to multiply by 4 on both sides. Okay, that's going to eliminate my 4s right here. I still have negative 1d on the right. On the left, when I do negative 0 0.27 times 4, I get negative 1 0.08. Okay, we're not done yet because my variable is not isolated yet. I still have a negative 1 hanging out right in front of it. That means multiply, so my next inverse operation is going to be divide by negative 1. I'll do that on both sides. Okay, that's going to cancel my negative 1's out and I'm left with positive d. That variable is isolated. On the left, I'm going to do negative 1.08 divided by negative 1, which will give me positive 1.08. And we're done. 
Next thing we'll do is just go check our solution. All right, ladies and gentlemen, up here was our solution that uh, we got when solving the equation. Please pause the video and take a look at the steps. Make sure that your work matches mine and that you do, in fact, get 2 equals 2, which is our true equality statement, meaning our solution is correct. Have a great day, you guys.